Now that we've seen the starter app, let's define a bunch of the terms we mentioned in the introduction and start learning about HTTP requests. TCP IP stands for Transmission Control Protocol and Internet Protocol. TCP IP represents the suite of protocols through which data is sent over the internet. This includes breaking data into packets and routing the data in between devices. HTTP stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol and is a layer on top of TCP IP that is used to transfer structured text data that contains hyperlinks. HTTP was initially developed by Tim Berners-Lee and his team at CERN in parallel with the development of the World Wide Web. Most modern web applications rely on what is called a RESTful or REST API. REST is typically defined as representational state transfer, and API is application programming interface. REST APIs are used to allow a client to access and modify data on a server using stateless operations. Typical operations are often called CRUD for create, update, read, and delete. They are also called post, put, get, and delete, and we'll see examples in this course. To investigate HTTP connections and REST APIs, we'll use the Postman HTTP client. Postman used to be a Chrome plugin, but now is available as a standalone app for macOS, Windows, and Linux. You can download Postman at getpostman.com. Our sample app for the course uses the GitHub v3 API. You can search for the API docs and investigate them on GitHub's developer site. I've set up Postman on my Linux dev machine and added a collection for the GitHub API. The collection includes three requests, one to get a user's public repos, one to get their public gists, and a third to get their profile info. These are all HTTP GET requests. Clicking on the repos request, you can see the URL for the request in the request URL text box. It's https api.github.com slash users slash woots slash repos, where woots is the username for a GitHub user. The dropdown next to the address is used to specify the type of HTTP request. Hitting the send button causes Postman to send an HTTP request to the URL specified for the request. The response from the server is shown below, along with a 200 OK status, which means the request was successful. There are other status codes, such as 400 codes for request errors and 500 codes for server errors. Taking a quick look at the response, you see that the server has returned structured data in text form. The data is in a format called JSON for JavaScript object notation. The JSON contains the list of public repos for the user we queried on GitHub. You can select and send the other GET requests and see the JSON data for the user gists and profile. Postman is a great tool for investigating an API you need to query from your app, especially if your backend team is developing the API in parallel with your app. It's well worth getting to know the features in Postman beyond the simple request we've made here.